Welcome to PowerCode Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the TaskCam Model 12's full MIDI implementation, and we're going to simply explain it. A big selling point for external hardware multi-track recorders today is whether or not they have built-in MIDI functionality. And if it does, how extensive are those features? One reason is because external multi-track devices such as sequencers and drum machines can then be synced and triggered, removing the need to record those tracks on the multi-track recorder itself. Now, I've said many times in the past that Tascam made a huge mistake by removing the MIDI implementation from its second generation digital Portis Studio DP24 and DP32 SD units. That choice may have made the DP24 and DP32 SD units cheaper and easy, easier to support, that is from Tascam's perspective, but that decision upset many loyal Tascam customers looking to buy new or upgrade to the model line of multi-track recorders, the next line up. The good news is that on the Model 12, Tascam put the MIDI in and out 5-pin DIM ports back on that unit only. The MIDI ports are not included on the Model 16 and Model 24 devices in that line of products. As to exactly why this is, you'd have to ask Tascam because I can only speculate. Of the top selling external hardware multi-track recorders on the market at the time of this presentation, Model 12 is the only one that includes built-in MIDI in and out ports. <laughs> it appears that the customer backlash from removing them from the DP24 and DP32 SD units may have had some impact on Tascam ensuring that they were included at least on the Model 12. At a $699 price point, including built-in MIDI ports on the Model 12 is the least Tascam could do to keep its MIDI customer base happy and satisfied. In this presentation, we are going to check out the Model 12's features, and then we're gonna analyze the Model 12's onboard MIDI functions, and finally, we'll explain in detail both the Model 12's standalone hardware and DAW-based, digital audio workstation-based MIDI implementations, as they are both different. Let's start with viewing the Tascam Model 12's features. The unit uses Ultra HDDA mic preamps that are built in for channels 1 through 6. This is a 10 input digital mixer with 10 line and 8 mic inputs. Now again, this is a digital mixer and this is Tascam specifications and not mine. So if you have any questions about the Model 12 being a digital mixer, contact Tascam. MIDI input and output connectors are available, and multi-track recording and playback is available with up to 12 tracks simultaneous recording, and you can see the input specifications in parentheses there. This is a USB audio interface with built-in functions like 12 tracks, that is uh, 10 input channels and two main mix uh, left-right bus inputs, and 10 track outputs and computer outputs. The unit supports USB 2.0 audio with resolutions of up to 24-bit and 48 KHC sampling frequencies. It also has digital compressors on every channel as well as TRS input jacks that support high impedance that is high Z on every channel as well. The channel inserts are on channels 1 and 2 and multiple buses are included uh, on the unit that are stereo main, sub, and aux buses. There are two aux sends and every input channel has a three band semi parametric equalizer. There's also a three band semi parametric equalizer available for output and the unit has 16 preset effects that can be used. It also supports Bluetooth audio playback and recording and punching in and out uh, per track. The unit uses HD cards for recording and playback and the foot switch functions are also available that include punching in and out, play and pause, and more. It has two built-in phone outputs 
and its stall control supports HUI, MCU emulation, and last but not least, a click output supports tap tempo. Now, we'll analyze the Model 12's onboard hardware MIDI functionality. Model 12 can generate MIDI timecode and MIDI clock messages whenever the unit is in play mode or recording. This MIDI data is streamed from the MIDI outport and also simultaneously to a PC that's connected via USB. With this, a drum machine and or a digital audio workstation, for example, can be configured to sync to the Model 12 using MIDI timecode to play in time with the unit. In Model 12, all MIDI configurations are managed on the MIDI menu screen. Let's talk about configuring the MIDI timecode function. When users enable MIDI timecode on the Model 12, the unit sends quarter frame messages during playback and recording. When locating, it will send full messages. To invoke this functionality, Model 12 must first be stopped. Then using the menu functionality, users must navigate to the MIDI screen and select MIDI timecode. The MIDI timecode screen will appear after that and then users must turn the multi-jog dial to set the desired timecode parameter option. The option and meanings are on your screen now. Now it's important to note that the type of the MIDI timecode sent by the Model 12 is 30 frames per second, that is FPS and it's non-drop. To save a modified setting on the screen, users must press the multi-jog dial like you would a button. Afterwards, this will send you back to the MIDI screen. Let's talk about configuring the MIDI clock and song position pointer, or SPP, functionality. When this function is activated, MIDI clock data is streamed during recording and playback. Song position pointer messages are sent when the unit is locating. Keep in mind that both SPP and MIDI clock functionality is related to and dependent on the metronome configuration settings in the Model 12. This is important. Now to invoke the MIDI clock and SPP functionality, Model 12 must first be stopped. Using the menu functionality, users must navigate to the MIDI screen and select the MIDI clock slash SPP option. The MIDI clock and SPP screen will then appear and users must turn the multi-jog dial to set the desired MIDI clock and SPP parameter option. The options and meanings are on your screen now. To save a modified setting on the screen, users must press the multi-jog dial like you would a button, and afterwards, this will send you back to the MIDI screen. Finally, we'll do an overview of both Model 12 standalone hardware and DAW-based MIDI implementations, starting with the standalone MIDI implementation. What you see here is a MIDI implementation chart for the Model 12 that shows the a MIDI implementation when the Model 12 is not plugged into a digital audio workstation. That is, it's functioning as a standalone unit. With this chart, we have four columns. The first is the function column. The second is the transmit column, which is what the Model 12 can send. Uh, the third is the recognize column as to what the Model 12 can receive is regard in regarding MIDI messages. The third is a remarks column, which uh, has details provided by uh, Tascam. So with this, it's important to understand the notes area at the top of the page. Uh, we have three different notes, just, you know, denoted by uh, one, two, and three there, those, those numbers. This is important because uh, when you look at what the Model 12 can transmit and receive, uh, these notes uh, next to the X's and O's will tell you what functionality has to be invoked in order for this to work. So that's important to keep in mind. Also, there are the uh, four modes which are to the right uh, on the top of the page, uh, which 
uh, are important also. Here, these aren't invoked, so we don't really have to worry about them as much. Now, um, what we're going to do is we are going to start with the function column and go down each line item to see what uh, MIDI implementation functionality uh, the, model, the Model 12 has in this regard. Um, and as you can see, this chart is fairly simple to read because there's not much. So let's start with the function column and we'll start with basic channels. Here we see that the Model 12 um, cannot transmit or receive any basic channel information, nor can it transmit or receive mode information. The same is also true for uh, the note number function, the velocity function, and the aftertouch functionality. Uh, this goes on uh, for the pitch bend functionality, no transmit or receive or recognize there, uh, or for the control change uh, functionality as well. Uh, we move down to the program change functionality. There's no transmit or recognize uh, there as well. But when we move down on the line items in the function uh, function column, we see system exclusive. Now here we have a big change because the Model 12 can transmit um, system exclusive information. But what you want to keep in mind is there's a little one after the transmit uh, O here. Um, again, X means can't transmit, O means it, it can. So there's a little one after it. Now when we look at our notes, the one means that the MTC full message uh, when MIDI timecode is on. It'll send MTC full message, that full message when the MIDI timecode is on. So with system exclusive, that's what uh, functionality uh, has to be invoked for it to be able to send system exclusive messages. It cannot, of course, recognize system exclusive, which is unfortunate. Um, moving down to the system common line item in the function column, um, we have uh, under position, we have that the Model 12 can transmit position information, but it cannot recognize song position information. So there's a little three after the O in the transmit column. When we look at our notes, the three is when MIDI clock SPP song position pointer is on, this will work. So that's important to keep in mind. Moving down to song select under system common, Model 12 cannot send or, re or receive or recognize this information. But when it comes to quarter frame information, there's an O in the transmit. That means that it can transmit this information, but it cannot recognize it. But there's a little two after the O in the transmit column under quarter frame. And when we look at the notes, this means that when MIDI timecode is on, the Model 12 can transmit quarter frame information. Under system common, when we look at tune, it can, the Model 12 cannot transmit or recognize uh, that information. So we move down to um, system real time. And under the uh, that line item under the function uh, uh, column, and we look at clock. The Model 12 can transmit clock information, but it has a little three after the O. And the three means that when uh, under our notes, it means when MIDI clock SPP is on, the Model 12 can send MIDI clock messages. It can transmit it. However, the unit cannot recognize or receive or can't recognize this information. can get it. It can get it. And that's what's important is recognize means it can get it. It, it can receive it. It just can't recognize it. Under system real time, um, the Model 12 cannot transmit or recognize uh, that specific MIDI information. And moving down the function line item column to the last uh, other area, um, the Model 12 cannot transmit or recognize uh, any other MIDI type of message when not connected to a digital audio workstation. Now, we'll check the Model 12's digital audio workstation based MIDI implementation. On your screen now, you will see which Model 12 controls that can be used with a DAW. Understand that after you connect to and configure your digital audio workstation, the DAW settings, state, user control knobs, buttons, and faders will not match. You must first change the DAW settings to match the Model 12 settings. You can also do the opposite and have the Model 12 controls match the DAW control settings. Now refer to the Model 12 DAW control owner's manual for details on how to do this. You can download this document from Taskam's website 
under Model 12 Support. Now, we'll move on to the MIDI Implementation Chart Digital Audio Workstation Control Ports. Now, this is how MIDI is implemented when the Model 12 is connected to a digital audio workstation. On this chart, we have four basic columns. The first is the function column. Then we have what the Model 12 can transmit and what the Model 12 can recognize in MIDI messages. And then we have the remarks column, which is, uh, has remarks and details provided by Tascam. And we'll start with the function column and we will go down each line item. First is the basic channels. Um, the Model 12 cannot transmit or recognize any basic channel MIDI messages, nor can it um, transmit and recognize any mode MIDI messages. However, moving down the function column to the note number, uh, these are note number ranges, um, we can see that uh, the Model 12 can transmit and recognize um, MIDI note range messages uh, in two different modes. And that is how this is broken down moving forward, is you have an HUI mode and a Mackie control mode. You can see that in the, in the remarks. And that's how we'll be able to see how MIDI is implemented by the different modes moving forward after the note number uh, line item. So with that, with velocity, uh, we see that in the both the UI, or should I say HUI mode and the Mackie control mode, the Model 12 is able to transmit and recognize note on MIDI messages, but it cannot transmit and recognize note off messages in either of those modes. So it's identical there. Moving down to the aftertouch function line item, um, the Model 12 is not able uh, through polyphonic or channel to transmit or recognize those MIDI messages. In the function column, moving down to pitch bin, we can see that in the Mackie control mode only, the Model 12 can transmit um, uh, can transmit uh, pitch bin MIDI data, but it can't recognize uh, MIDI transmit pitch data. Moving down to control change, under both the HUI mode and the control mode, uh, the Model 12 can actually transmit and recognize program, or, or should I say uh, control change messages. Moving down to program change. Uh, the Model 12 uh, cannot transmit or receive this type of MIDI message data. Uh, next is system exclusive in the function column. The Model 12 can transmit and recognize system exclusive MIDI data through the Mackie control mode only. Now moving down to the last three options, which is system common, system real time, and uh, other MIDI uh, messages, the Model 12 is unable to transmit or recognize any of those. In summary, keep in mind that the current Model 12 MIDI implementation at the time of this presentation could significantly improve with future firmware updates. This is a good reason to check Tascam's website regularly for firmware revisions. You never know, if enough Model 12 users demand more MIDI functionality, Tascam may very well add it. Well, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think about this presentation and check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Spotify. Also, while you're here, listen to some of the music and check out some of the other uh, presentations and especially the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.